Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today I'm excited to take a look at The Cycle, a PvP and PvE quest-based shooter. It's a really beautifully made game with a great sci-fi atmosphere, an interesting world, and fun combat. It also brings its own unique flavor to a Battle Royale-like experience. Emphasis on the like, as it's not exactly a Battle Royale. It's free to play, and all the microtransactions are cosmetic only, so no pay to win mechanics. You can click the link in the video description to download the game, which is available on the Epic Games Store, and I'd like to give a huge thank you to Jaeger for sponsoring this video. Now, describing this game to potential players is tricky, because it really is a blending of themes, or rather the creation of a new theme. It's kind of like a battle royale, except in order to win, you not only have to survive until the end of the match, but you also have to earn the most bounties during the round. So multiple players can survive, but the winner is the one who collected the most bounty points and survived. There's 20 players per match, and you can play solos, duos, and now ranked four player squads. And even if you don't win your game, you still get loot and rewards depending on what you did during the round. So the game isn't purely about coming in first, but it certainly helps to speed up your unlocks and new items. The game takes place in orbit of the planet Fortuna 3. In fact, before a match begins, the lobby area lets you look out the window of your space station down onto the planet's surface where there's a massive storm raging with a calm center. The eye of the storm is where you go to loot and fight for valuable resources. In fact, the name of the game, The Cycle, describes the planet's cyclical nature of its highly lethal storms and environmental hazards. Basically, at the start of the round, you drop pod down to the center of the storm, you fight and loot, and as the round progresses, the environment gets less and less stable until you are forced to evacuate on a dropship at the center of the map. Once the timer runs out, the radiation effects from the storm drain your health, so you really can't stick around. Now, once a match begins, you need to start earning credits and bounties. Credits let you order better weapons and perks from the station overhead. These items will drop pod right in front of you on the map, but you have to pick them up manually. The higher level weapons can allow you to out damage or outrange enemy players in a firefight. You can also buy weapons with huge HOE damage to deal with PVE threats better, depending on what your strategy is. The perks you order can range from bubble shields to auto turrets to stim packs and more, but you can only have two equipped at a time. Some of them are clearly better for PvP, while others are more PvE oriented. Now when it comes to earning bounties, the things you need to collect in order to get first place, the strategies here are endless and the types of bounties vary a lot. Killing enemy players will give you a bounty point, so there's certainly an incentive to engage in PvP, plus you get some credits and can sometimes steal their weapon. Also I'm not sure if you're technically killing the enemy players as they get covered up in foam upon death, so I guess it's for later extraction. The the other bounties you can earn can range from activating communications towers, repairing generators on outposts, using mining facilities, salvaging drones, harvesting crystals, mushrooms or natural gas, and hunting specific wildlife. In fact, there's actually a lot more than that, and as I keep playing, the new types of bounties appear to me They require different approaches. Now, it might sound like bounties are a little bit of busy work, but it often requires that you fight a lot of the wildlife, and the higher the bounty rewards, the harder the wildlife gets. Sometimes you have to cut and run when the odds are too overwhelming. Not to mention engaging an army of monsters makes you a vulnerable target to somebody sneaking up. Certainly an easy way to get a kill is to find somebody already low on shields from fighting monsters and then just finish them off and take their reward from the bounty they were hunting. In fact, bounties can start stacking up quite quickly if you start multitasking or combining two bounties together like killing an enemy player and stealing the resources that you needed to complete another bounty. The strategy on how you approach bounty hunting is probably the most important factor when it comes to winning the game. Taking over and protecting gas extractors gives you a constant point gain towards earning bounties, but it also requires a long time to pay off. Picking up a super rare zeal shard allows you to earn bounties at a constant rate, but it also spots you to everyone on the map, so your chances of getting ambushed go up significantly. Extracting crystals can be a great way to earn a lot of credits from fighting monsters, but it also distracts you from enemy players who might be approaching. The dynamics of bounty hunting also change up a lot depending on how you team up with your allies. I spent most of the time playing solos as it adds a really interesting dynamic where you have the option to team up with another player in the match. 
This can happen if you see them in the world and invite them to your party. However, because you're playing in a solo game and duos would be a huge advantage over solo players, teaming up comes with the downside of having to give up half of your health. So a good solo player has a decent chance of winning a 1v2 but you can usually earn bounties faster when teamed up, as long as it's a good organized team. That being said, only one person can come in first place, and you do have the option to disband your party and try and stab your teammate in the back to steal first place from them. Though I didn't actually see this happen, I like the idea that it could happen. When it comes to gunplay, enemy players take more damage from headshots and all the monsters have specific weak points, so if you're accurate enough to take advantage, they'll certainly give you a leg up. Weapons can also be modded with better accuracy stats and abilities, though the developers did a really good job of making sure that most of the upgrades come with downsides. So someone with 100 hours into the game and all the upgrades isn't just going to have a DPS advantage, they'll be able to sort of fine tune their weapons for specific tasks. Now speaking of weapon modding, crafting is a major focus of the game. Once you finish a match, you'll keep all the crafting materials you picked up during the round and you can use it to craft new weapons, mods, and upgrades to your suit. Remember, even unlocking a higher level gun doesn't mean you actually get it when you start a match. You still need to earn it, or buy it rather, with credits once you drop down. You also have to earn favor with different factions in order to unlock blueprints to craft better guns and gear. At the start of each round, you pick a faction you want to earn favor for, and when you do well, you'll get a big XP bump, hopefully unlocking new blueprints with them. There's a huge amount of strategy to designing your personal loadout, plus there's different types of kits that augment your basic movement and melee abilities in-game. You can get jetpacks, jump packs, double jumps, boosted jumps, ground pounds, teleport dodging, and more. And although it might sound like you may be needing a spreadsheet just to keep track of all the different things in this game, it's surprisingly inviting. The first time I sat down with the cycle, the hours went by extremely fast, and even after a long session, my brain was already theory crafting new builds and strategies. It's a fun game with surprisingly good polish, art direction, and a variety of playstyles that goes way beyond your typical shooter. The strategy is where the real depth of the game comes from. What resources do you go for at the start? Do you take a big risk by going for the higher loot right away? Or do you grind credits for guns right away? Do you team up with an enemy or ambush them? There's a ton of strategies to think about. Season 2 for the game is actually kicking off real soon in February, and it's going to bring a ton of new content. A new map, a new season pass with over 100 different levels and like 130 items to collect. As if there isn't enough stuff to do in the game already, there's going to be plenty more coming down the line. Again, this game is free to play with no pay to win mechanics, which is great. It costs you nothing to try it out, and I highly recommend that you do. Click the link in the video description to get the game. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off. Safe and sound. Nice to have you with us.